Hi. All right, it's March 21, 2021. Flooding. Focusing, focusing on uh, Sydney, New South Wales, Southeast Queensland, Australia. But first, the flooding just this past week around the world. And I have not, I have not, uh, I'm not going to be able to show you all of the flooding in so many different countries. Congo. You know, I've been doing this now for literally 10 years. I've posted so many of these videos and I'm breaking down. I'm really breaking down. I am having a hard time just posting away and nothing ever comes of it. Flash flood sweeps everything away in the streets of uh, Ecuador. <laughs> Hay más gente transmitiendo en vivo también. Bueno, aquí estamos en el puente nuevamente. Solo que ya estoy del otro lado, ahora sí ya puedo cruzar a mi casa. Estos momentos continúa la creciente en el desbordamiento del río aquí en el parque. Compañeros, aquí a la avenida universitaria. You know, it's amazing when I. I look at these videos and I think to myself, well, this doesn't look that bad, <laughs> comparatively speaking, to other places that are literally underwater. Um, Ecuador, I think, this is, could this be the same video? I'm sorry if it is.
ya el agua está inundando la calle 18 de noviembre y Juan de Salinas también hacia allá. La avenida está completamente inundada de agua, no, no son calles, son ríos como digo. Yeah, um, Indonesia. so many people all over the world who have died or they're displaced don't have homes anymore don't have the resources to do anything about it and um, this this happens on a weekly basis so just imagine now they've shut down the economy pretty much in every country all these people who have lost their jobs <clears throat> and so many around the world, that includes Americans, you know, just living paycheck to paycheck. So suddenly you don't have a paycheck. What the hell are you supposed to do? They're taking out people left and right. But on a weekly basis, just in our country alone, on a weekly basis for an entire year, we have set records of those first-time uh, unemployed filing for unemployment every week, every week, every week. That alone sure does destroy an awful lot of people. Then we have these daily weather hits. And, yeah, all right, a decade posting videos showing the evidence, showing how they can create, oh, this fabulous flooding, rain nonstop, tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, fires, and lightning. And I have never seen the kind of devastation that I've been seeing escalating to a point where I can take a lot. I'm amazed. I just, I feel like I can't do this anymore. You know, my playlists, this is the global warming climate change nonsense. And just recently, I posted a video. Let's see if I have it up here. Um, I just posted a video. You can watch quotes of scientists who dispute global warming. There are so many scientists around the world who dispute what the IPCC is saying, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, what Greta Thunberg says. Um, it's a lie. It's a lie. And I'm really having a hard time 
living in a world of lies. Now, quotes of scientists. Um, Climate change lie, the basis of Agenda 2030, sustainability, must be stopped. This is, God, this was years and years and years ago. 31,487, that started, that started this petition. They got more signatures. Just American scientists who dispute what the IPCC is saying. 31,000. But but we're the anti-science people, right? Anti-science. The climate change deniers. The Because we've done the research and looked into and listened, had an open mind to listen to, because I believe the climate change lie a long, long time ago. Then I came across evidence that Wow, there's a there's another side to this. And I looked into it. Five hundred scientists write United Nations, no climate emergency, but let's focus on a sixteen year old actress perform at the United Nations. Yeah. Um and I just recently posted another video. Oh, all right, this is the video. I thought I was on my playlist, my playlist uh, page, but it's the recent video. The Biden executive order on, oh God, got to take 30% of your private property away. Yeah, we are living now such an, an obvious takeover, a wealth redistribution from the 90% to the 10%. And it's so obvious now and it's frightening to see how many people just will not even entertain that we are at war with the quote-unquote elite. They won't even entertain it. So more and more people get destroyed in the process. So this was the video, you know, that I recently posted. And yeah, more quotes. More. It's a money machine. Billions of dollars of grant money are flowing into the pockets of those on the man-made global warming bandwagon. No global warming, the money dries up. It's big money. Make no mistake about it. Always follow, follow the money trail, and it tells a story. This was uh, James Spann, American Meteorological Society, certified meteorolo- meteorologist. and But I came across... A, more new quotes, a whole lot of more scientists, Nobel Prize winning scientists, those renowned in their field, but we're anti-scientist for listening to them and listening to a governmental panel, not a scientific panel, a governmental panel out of the United Nations the few scientists putting out those horror stories of how the earth, it's just going to, well, float away or it's going to burn up or, you know, uh, we're all going to be dead in just a few years. Freaking children out. Um, I hate it, as you probably can hear. Um, there's so many, so many that have come out, that have, you know, spoken against the climate change narrative. They get destroyed. They get silenced. It's a religion. It's a cult, these climate change crazy people. The young who have been so grossly indoctrinated in a lie They don't know any better unless they have the adults around them sane enough to tell them the truth. Nobel Prize winner for physics. Global warming has become a new religion. 
All right. Well, I'll link below to this video, and you can watch it. You can circulate it. You can not watch it. You can not circulate it. But, man, Colombia, Colombia has been hit hard. <laughs> So roads, you know, just <laughs> washed away, bridges washed away, uh, landslides, flooding, um, you know, it's, yeah, and it's all climate change, right? It's all climate change. Australia. <laughs> and the, the flood happening more likely or, or more severely. But while the rain keeps falling and water keeps rising, any talk of future preventative measures are on hold. For now, all eyes are on this emergency and saving lives before the situation gets any worse. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to reporter Kylie Morris in Newcastle, New South Wales. I asked her what the mood was like. I think an increasing sense of alarm now, Fatima. Certainly a few days ago, in some of the small towns right on the coast, uh, we saw pretty intense rain and very localised flooding. But now it's just a sheer kind of geographical stretch of this storm front now. The fact that, you know, from Port Macquarie in the north, which is in a holiday town on the north coast of New South Wales, all the way down now to Sydney. And what we're hearing now, the latest from Sydney and the western suburbs of Sydney, uh, are that there are major evacuations underway. People are being warned potentially not to try to go to work today, not to send their children to school, but to stay indoors. Kylie, do we have a sense yet of the scale of the destruction? It's huge. The scale of the destruction is friggin' huge. And of course, what do we have? It's climate change. And I'm sorry that I cut off this, you know, but I can't. Australia, the fires last year, the killing of a billion animals, and it's climate change. And, you know, this is, this is as far as people will go just listening to mainstream media lying. And they're complicit with all of the destruction. Change make these extreme weather events more likely. Heat waves are easy to link to climate change. Um, wildfires and droughts are more complicated. But in general, they're the sorts of things that you would expect more of as a result of warming. We've looked at all. More of, more of, more of. Now, I have oh, also a weather modification playlist. A weather modification playlist. And you can check it out. Um, in fact, why don't we just go there? Let's go. My channel. Playlists. Okay. U.S. flooding. Floods. Directed energy weapons. Global warming nonsense. Weather modification. And on here, 318 videos. If people don't like to do the research and they don't feel like reading, well, plenty, myself included, plenty of people 
have done the research for you. And you can just take a look. But he's talking about heat waves. It is easy for them to create heat waves with all of the chemicals, the heavy metals in the atmosphere. The black carbon dust dumps that we see. All of that black crap. That is a very inexpensive ingredient for them to create heat waves. Here, it's only 20 minutes. Heat waves. And all you need to know that it's temperature modification induced by man. <sighs> yeah, it's... El Salvador. This was El Salvador. Now, <sighs> cars just, it's nonstop. Okay. I have a lot of Australian subscribers. What's happening in New South Wales, Southeast Queensland, and unfortunately, more and more evacuations. Thousands have been evacuated, homes floating away. And because man can create all of this, you cannot say that this is natural. You can't. You know, that's the gift to militaries with this weather modification. And I have posted many videos, those documents, military documents, the spoofing that they love with weather modification because people will think it's natural. Great. As we go to air, numerous towns along the mid-north coast are underwater. Communities have been cut off and mass evacuation orders are in place. In Sydney, supercells have ripped through suburbs in our west, bringing rare tornadoes and significant damage. There's a moderate to major flood warning tonight for the Nepean, Hawkesbury and Colo rivers. And the severe weather is expected to keep hammering our coast for days to come. Reporter Tiffany Genders begins our coverage. A suburb turned upside down as if a wrecking ball went through the streets of Chester Hill. <laughs> in what can only be described as a tornado roaring to life early this morning. All of a sudden the wind picked up and then we saw the tornado form and then we saw trees and plants and people's furniture flying in the air, rubbish bins and then we screamed and just ran back inside. I was never, I've never been so scared in my life. More than 50 homes damaged in the sudden whirlwind. My dad's roof's over there somewhere. Don't know whose trampoline that is. Matt Ho left tarping up his father's house after part of the roof peeled off. Everything the 78-year-old owns now ruined. At my age, anything come, anything goes. <laughs> it was a storm within the storm. Smithfield also smashed. I've never seen any wind like that, man. Especially rip out a two-story, two, two three-story tree. Unbelievable. Scenes just like it all over Sydney. A waterfall outside the water park at Manly. Rain spilling from the lifts at Town Hall Station. The Parramatta River bursting its banks. Inundating the site of the new powerhouse museum. There are so many videos on what's happening in Australia right now. So I'll just show you excerpts of some of them. You can do the search yourself, but let's just say there's a lot of areas experiencing their Harvey. Australia's east coast was smashed by heavy rains on Saturday. They caused dangerous flash flooding that forced the evacuation of multiple regions. The fast-moving waters unmoored houses, engulfed roads, stranded towns and cut power lines. Port Macquarie resident Beverly Quill's belongings have been damaged by the flood water. I've just cancelled my flood insurance to save $90 a month right at the wrong time. I never thought this would happen. It's never ever happened here. 
Most of the coast of New South Wales state, which is home to about a third of Australia's 25 million people, has already seen March rainfall records broken. Authorities have warned the downpour was likely to continue for several days. Officials had issued nine evacuation orders for about 15 areas by Saturday afternoon. People were urged to stay at home and avoid any non-essential trips, with officials lambasting those who'd needed help after venturing out into the stormy weather. Emergency crews responded to about 4,000 calls for help over the past two days. Australia's East Coast. Here's another one. Okay. This guy really, really pissed me off to no end. And, you know, how these people smile when people are losing everything, how they smile is, I don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe, maybe I am miserable. Maybe I'm a miserable human being, as so many people have left comments just like that over the years. Maybe I'm miserable. But I, I, I don't think I am. I just feel for people who have lost everything. Uh, the Premier of New South Wales, Wales is calling this a once in a century event. Well, what does she mean by that? She means, and I know it's a bit of a cliche, but it is unprecedented. I know much of New South Wales hasn't seen extreme weather like this for 100 years, and much of Western Sydney, 50 years. We do get heavy rain. I lived in London for many years, and when it rains there, we get a lot of drizzle. But here in Sydney, when it rains, it absolutely pours. And I've often said that even central Sydney, the roads, the streets are not built for heavy rain. I had to make a few detours on Friday, for instance, because the road, the drains, the gutters were absolutely flooded. And What is the smirk on this guy's face? Wow. All right. You know, and this is the lead up to, oh, building back better and building Sydney for Agenda 2030. And who's paying for it? We're all paying for it. No matter what country you're in, we are all paying through our taxes. Now, do you think the the very wealthy elite who are bringing this deception to the world are going to be paying they they don't pay we pay there are so many friggin homes flooded in australia from the air an assessment is made of the damage caused by torrential rain in new south wales's capital sydney the largest dam has overflowed flooding neighbourhoods in the city's western suburbs. Further north on what was meant to be their wedding day, a couple lost their home as it floated down Manning River after bursting its banks. Emergency services have responded to thousands of calls from people who have been left stranded. Many more have been forced from their homes. And there are warnings of more flash floods in the coming days with water levels not expected to subside until Thursday. Our first and foremost priority is to save lives, save as many properties as possible, but also to give people enough warning uh, of what's occurring. And I appreciate in parts of the mid and north coast regions which are experiencing the one in 100 year event, there's been sustained damage to infrastructure, there's been sustained damage to how people communicate and move around. And I just want to say to everybody in New South Wales who's experiencing that fear and that anxiety that our thoughts are with you and we'll get assistance Oh, don't you feel much better? Don't you feel much better? I mean, my thoughts are with you. Do you feel better? <laughs> Maybe people just don't. So many people, they, they literally do not have any idea what it feels like. I know. have comprehensive coverage tonight from our team of reporters in the worst affected regions. Robert Ovadia begins our coverage. It comes with the territory, quite literally, if you live on a floodplain like Windsor. 
The Hawkesbury is raging at speed and carrying with it debris that was on land before the river surge. The Windsor Bridge was closed. Still, some raced across knowing it might be their last chance before water swallows the lot. I just think it'll be funny if the new bridge goes under because they just built it and it was supposed to be to stop the flood. It is a spectacle for those who have never experienced it. Really weird and I just never seen this much water. And for those who have. Of all the floods that I've seen here, this is the fastest flowing that I've seen. This is why prolific rainfall combining with a forced spill upstream from Warragamba churning out roughly 100 Olympic swimming pools every minute. The dam did spill over the last time five years ago, uh, but obviously when it's a one in 50 year event in terms of the amount of rainfall and the sustained rainfall, it has a huge impact. This is Mel and Blake's first home. Their backyard is flooded. They are salvaging what they can. Comparing it to the 88 flood, um, which hit the top of our garage. Um, so we're kind of hoping that we don't get the water into the house at this point. Shane's Park, midway between Windsor and Penrith, is a disaster zone. Rescues were needed here, inflatable boats going up and down streets to pull people from their homes. Oh, I'm so grateful, like so grateful. It, yeah, I was really worried about what I was going to do. Inside the home Lara Pengilly left behind, the water is still rising. Yeah, it's pretty devastating. The SES knows its work is not over. We have at least oh, about 30 odd houses along this street here um, that we're just checking on, make sure everyone's okay. Large swathes of pit town and surrounding areas are also underwater. A police car is too. At Freeman's Reach, officers managed to escape. One man winched off a roof by police and holiday homes at Sackville have submerged while the Nepean is rising rapidly too, anticipating the worst flooding here in half a century. I've lived here for 31 years and I've never ever seen it this high. Those suburbs orbiting Penrith, Emu Plains, Jamison Town are all in danger. Potentially. Can't listen to her again. You know, people saying... Uh, that woman who talked about, I just cancelled my flood insurance because we've never had anything like this. When man can create weather, that weather destruction can come anywhere. Anywhere. So a whole lot of people you know, have left comments throughout the years, well, they shouldn't be living in a flood zone. You know how many people have been flooded and they do not live in a flood zone? You know how many people were flooded during Katrina and then moved to non-flood zones in Louisiana, like Baton Rouge area, and then were flooded again? People do not. You know, I, I know that I have the knowledge that I have because of the time I've spent looking into things. That doesn't mean that I have all the details of the big picture every single day. But it's clear to me that an awful lot of people are lacking a lot of knowledge and they can't quite connect the dots because of that lack. And it's imperative that they, you know, put the pieces together. So the flooding has been intense, really intense. The animals, the animals that have washed away because of the flooding, the elderly, the... Uh, what the hell? But it's the cattle that were washed off their paddock, which really hurts. They all got washed away. 192. 192 animals, big and small. While some cattle are barely keeping their heads above water, Locals are doing everything they can to rescue livestock wherever they are. Some taking shelter on the veranda. Come back. Back away from the gate. Helping round them up is Joshua Edge. He was living in the house that floated away. Everything Sarah and I worked hard for our whole lives was there. Like We've just lost everything right down to my, my baby photos. He was supposed to get married yesterday but he still can't get to his fiancée, who's trapped in Taree. She's amazing. She's, like, she's the love of my life. 
I'll have a dearly. Miss you and I can't wait, you know, to see you and give you a big hug and a kiss. For those whose homes haven't been completely destroyed or washed away down the river, this is the kind of scene that they'll be faced with when they're able to return. A clean-up that could take months. I just pinch myself to sort of try and wake myself up from this nightmare. And a nightmare it is. This is a live look at the Windsor Bridge in the northwest of the city. It's newly built to survive floods, but it's under threat right now. And the rain just keeps falling. This is a live look at Sydney Harbour. Up to 70 millimetres is forecast for the day ahead. And it's a wet and windy morning in the plaza that's outside our studio here. We're looking at a live look now, a pretty miserable... 150 millimetres of rain is expected for parts of Sydney. That's over the next two days. At least 4,000 people could be evacuated, with hundreds rescued in the past 24 hours. The Hawkesbury and Nepean rivers are expected to peak this morning at levels not seen since 1961. 18 disaster zones have been declared in New South Wales, most of them on the flood-ravaged mid-north coast. Almost 140 schools are closed across the state. That's being updated. It's now 200. The flooding threat is widespread. The east coast is being hammered by record rain. The main concerns now are Port Macquarie in the north to the New South Wales south coast. Sydney is right in the centre of the danger zone. And this is why. The SES has released this animation showing how floodwaters can spread quickly across the vast floodplains in the Hawkesbury, Penrith and Blacktown area. The water fills the basin a bit like a bathtub where 150,000 people live. The most recent evacuation orders are for the western part of Jamison Town, western parts of Penrith and the northern end of Mulgoa. Volunteers at Penrith work into the night for a community on the brink of a flooding disaster. Locals in Jamison Town, the western part of Penrith and Mulgoa Creek told to get out before they're cut off by the rising river. I've seen a lot of people here, some coming through in tears and uh, in desperation. Um, never seen it like this before and they're very glad of somewhere to come and grab some sandbags that they didn't have access to before. In tears, that's pretty awful. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's uh, pretty sad to see, really. Amid the gloom, there were light-hearted moments as well. You're between the creek and all this water without, and the Nepean. Without a paddle. <laughs> You're laughing, though. Oh, so what do you do? This is a really good example of the community here in Penrith pitching in. The SES were absolutely swamped. They were overwhelmed. So this charity, the Rapid Relief Team, pitched in. They've been filling over 3,000 sandbags already this afternoon. Just in a Our new normal. Filling sandbags. All right. I am so sorry, you guys. I sure hope all of my subscribers in New South Wales are okay and it's going to go on till Thursday or Friday the rain coming down more and more evacuations the dam the river's flooding can't friggin stand it 